Yeah. See if anybody's here. If you're not going to be on a panelist, mute yourself. Hey, Jim. Jim? Yes. Sounds like some are having trouble. I just got a text from Tim Bowles. He says he's having trouble and some DDs having trouble getting on. A lot of them aren't. There's 20 clients. Yeah. I don't know. I'm just saying I just got a text. Let you know. All right. Well, it's your show, Chris, so I'm just going to go ahead and mute myself. Okay. Hello, gentlemen. Um, we're going to go ahead and get started here pretty soon. Uh, this is a DD meeting. Uh, try to get all you guys in here and kind of get you going uh, to finish strong for the next for the rest of the year here. So we're going to go ahead and start the meeting off with a prayer for our Father. Name of Father, Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be Thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Amen. The Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right, gentlemen, uh, we've still got some people trying to log in here, so we'll kind of keep it... Uh, Moving on, and if uh, you log in, someone comes in late and we have to answer a question for them, we will. Um, Jeff Kiliani, State Deputy, are you uh, ready to log on here? I'm logged on. I just can't see, or everybody can't see me. I can see you. Maybe that's a good well, thing. Well, we just want to hear you speak anyways. Okay. <laughs> I'll uh, go ahead and give it to you. Okay. Thanks, Chris. I apologize for my camera not working tonight. Uh, I got to do something, probably get a new camera, I guess. Uh, anyways, thank you all for joining us tonight. We just want to uh, to reach out and just uh, stay connected with everyone. Um, actually, Ohio is having a, a very good year so far, uh, membership-wise. Um, we're, we're getting... Uh, Close to our 1,860 goal, we have uh, 622 new members so far this year. Not quite where we want to be, uh, but otherwise still pretty good. Uh, just a couple of things before Chris gets going and, and, and talks to you and Andrew and everybody else talks. Um, I just, I just want to say thank you for all you're doing as a district deputy. Um, I would like you to start communicating a little bit more with your diocesan growth directors in that um, when you know of your councils having a, uh, a membership uh, activity, whether a church drive or a council function, uh, please reach out to them, give them a call, text, email, whatever, and let them know that something is going on with that council. Uh, membership drive wise and also if uh any of your councils are hosting a degree uh the growth director should be aware of that so please reach out to him and let him know something that's going on degree wise in your district uh, we're trying to encourage councils to uh go back to those members or potential members let me say uh, that they talked to at their recent church drives. We have a lot of councils that did church drives, uh, a lot of successful church drives, uh, and we're seeing those numbers this last week was, was a very good week uh, coming in. So um, many of those, those potential members that they talked to at those drives uh, did not sign up, uh, and we're encouraging them to go back now and reach out to them uh, before the holidays and, and uh, just uh, a little one-on-one -on -one and maybe give them a little nudge that way. Uh, we're working on some type of a uh, incentive to uh, draw those members in. So uh, we'll have more on that uh, in the next week or so. 
Uh, with that, I'll uh, turn this back over to Chris, and uh, we'll uh, get going here with, with everything we want to cover tonight. Thanks, Chris. Thank you, all district deputies. Thanks, Jeff. Um, first off, I want to start out with uh, talking about some couple reports that we've gotten out here in the past couple weeks. Uh, first one is we're talking about the exempts that are reported on the 450. Uh, right now, per the latest report that uh, we get a weekly report of number of exempts, and we're showing that we've got 56 of them reported in the state. 17 of them were by the Ohio State Council, which means 39 of them were reported by everyone else besides the Ohio State Council. Guys, there's a lot more exempts going on. We really would like to, when a, an exemplification happens, we need to get a 450, whether it's from the financial secretary, the grand knight, the district deputy, membership director, the dog catcher down the street. We'd like to have a, a 450. It kind of gives us a notice so that we can kind of keep an eye out to see we can match up form 100s that are submitted and everything else. I know there's a lot more exempts happening. They're just not getting reported. So really, that's the first thing I want to say is really encourage all your councils to report their exempts and their 450s and report them as soon as possible, within a day or so. It doesn't have to be done that night, although it's just as easy to do it that night. But we really like to get that information because it kind of gives us a good uh, avenue to track. Another thing that I was looking at, uh, we've got 185s for the um, that were due July 1st. We've got a, we're at 92 and a half percent, which is pretty good considering all the inactive councils we got. But so I'm feeling pretty good about that one. If there's any that haven't been reported yet uh, with your councils, whether it's an active or an inactive, please try to get something get some paperwork in so we have an idea who to contact, especially when we're trying to do some rejuvenation on some of these councils. Uh, the next one is the 365, that's the service personnel. Guys, that's holding at 69.5%. We're missing a lot of inf uh, opportunity to communicate, especially with the program directors, and we don't have a way to communicate if we don't have a good form 365 on uh, tap. And also, if we don't have a 365, that means that council is cutting its uh, chances down of achieving star council. So they really need to get that 365 in and make it a good one. Make sure that it's a good email address. It's not a council email address, but it's a personal email address of each one of the uh, directors. So we need to work on that. Another one that I found a little um, out of kilter was the um, Form 1295, which is the audits. That's from August of 23, and that's holding at 69.79%. Uh, so that means we've got to, some a lot of councils out there are behind on their paperwork. So I think it, what you need to do, uh, which you can check in your, uh, star report that comes once a month, or you can check on each council's uh, uh, pay in your own reports. You can see if they've entered these reports or not. I'd like, really would like you to work with them and try to get a lot of this paperwork in so we know who we're talking to and how we can help them. If we don't know who to talk to, we can't help them. So that's really what I'm trying to say there. The last one that I really wanted to talk about there, Mike Jordan was supposed to be here tonight, but he decided to run out of the country. I don't know if it was because he was escaping from the law or what, but we'll give him a pass on it. Um, general program reporting. Right now, we've only got 27.25% of the councils have reported in the state. Guys, Program reporting is critical to growth because how can we be doing all these activities in our parish and our community and we're not advertising the good works we do? Program reporting is a good way. There's nothing wrong with patting yourself on the back. 
And we need to do better program reporting so we show the world what the Knights of Columbus is doing and what we stand for. So, you know, I know, and I've heard it too from many councils, well, we don't care about that. We're just doing what we need to do. Yes, but, you know, we're trying to grow the order. We're trying to advertise the order. We're trying to get people interested and we're trying to do a lot of good things. They all go together. So please, you know, work with your council, see if you can get them to really get involved with their uh, all the activities that they do. A lot, these councils are doing some fantastic things, but we don't know about it. And on a personal side, I love to copy a good program. There are many councils out here that do unique and individual things. And if they give me an idea for my council, why can't I use it? So that's why we really need to work with these guys and get them to uh, uh, advertise by getting involved in the uh, state program. Uh, one of the big things I wanted to talk about was the Form 90, 944s that were submitted. Uh, we did pretty good. We had out of the 337 reports that were submitted, just give you a quick rundown, 214 of them were judged healthy and sustainable councils. 69 of them were operating and need help. Three of them were non-functioning reactivate. I'm not quite sure what that one means. Uh, 38 of them were non-functioning uh, merger or dissolve. 13 of them non-functioning, no action at all. And 84 councils didn't get a 944 reported. Going through the list, there were a lot of councils, good councils, that would have increased that healthy and sustainable. But for some reason, when the district deputy submitted them, he might have submitted three out of his five or two out of his four, he didn't get all of his councils in his uh, district submitted. We had 23 district deputies who did not submit all the reports in their district. And we had about 84, 85 missing reports. So what I would say is I sent a, uh, I sent a report out, email out to uh, all the district deputy coordinators a couple weeks ago and ask them to review it and then, uh, you know, break it down for their diocese and see what they can do to uh, get some of these 944 submitted. Even though they're late, we still would like to get them in because we'd like to know what the view is of the district deputy on these councils. Do they need help? Do they not need help? Uh, how? What can we do to, uh, to apply it? Uh, so, if there's any councils, any of your uh, councils that you did not get it in, please, let's get it in there. A um, couple of the other things. We're coming along. Oh, one other thing I wanted to talk about was uh, the percentage of councils visited. Uh, we're not getting, a, we're sitting about uh, 51, 52% of our council reports, uh, visitation reports. Guys, I know there's more, more you are visiting these councils and you're going to the meetings and everything like that. I really, really encourage you to fill out that DD visitation report and let's get it in because that gives us just a snapshot of your visit and let us know that, uh, you know, this council's coming on. Are they behind on their 185, 365, or whatever? Do they need some assistance? Do they have a degree coming up? But we're talking, we're, you know, 50, 51% on visitation reports. And I know that we've got a lot of DDs visiting a lot of um, councils. So I know everyone doesn't like to do paperwork, but the paperwork that I'm talking about is not that strenuous and it's not that time consuming. So I really would like, you guys are the eyes and the ears for the state council, and you really need to step up your game and let's get those reports in. Um, make sure that you all, hopefully everyone's getting Ken Girk's star report that he puts out. Guys, this is the greatest tool there is 
in order to communicate with your councils because it gives them, you know, right up to the first of the month, they can get their stuff and it starts at the first. So what it does is through that time period, it lets us know and it lets them know, hey, this report didn't get in or this uh, measure up money hasn't reached there. It gives them a check. It may be a month behind, but it gives them an indicator. So please uh, make sure you use that report as you go over it with your uh, council leaders and don't just, uh, uh, you know, just don't fluff it off. It's a really good, important tool to use. Um, so at this time, I'm pretty much done with my preaching there. I just want to stress today is the 19th of November. Uh, we've got about five to six weeks left in this year. Don't let your councils go dormant. Don't let them say, well, you know, after the first year, we'll kind of start picking things up. Now is the time to really be zeroing in, as uh, Jeff was saying, and talk to those new members. And let's get let's get them to degrees. Let's get degrees going. Let's get reports done. Let's uh, get the finish strong in the first half of the fraternal year. And let's get a good jump on the next year. Don't wait till the last minute to file your reports, get your degrees, get your members to a degree. Uh, if you need to make a phone call, don't wait till tomorrow to get it done. Let's get it done tonight. So at, at that time, uh, we'll go ahead and uh, hand it off to uh, Andy Knuckles. You talk about growth. All right. Um, you want me to join as well or no? Yes. All right. So uh, I'll fill in for uh, Mike Jordan since I was the uh, previous uh, state program director since he's on a uh, holiday out of the country right now. Uh, I don't know if he's getting a suntan or where he's at, but, um, <laughs> you know, uh, our programs are, you know, and my mem my growth, you know, go hand in hand. You know, if, if a council is doing great programs, I truly believe membership bring in the council growth will be easy to do. You know, Supreme has come out with a new In the Breach series, uh, Mission of the Family. I, I recommend all councils, you know, to promote that. And don't do that at a council meeting, but put that on at a parish-wide event. Use, you know, uh, your parish hall, Use, you know, the parish gathering space, but show that video. It's a six video series, just like the uh, other in the breach series. But every time I see councils do that at a parish event, you know, not just a council setting, I always see great growth come in about that. I had a couple uh, reports come in over the last month for membership activities. And they said they brought in two new members because of doing the In the Breach series. So just think about that. When you when you use those resources, you open up, you know, for the husband and wife to watch that video series and have maybe a uh, a little talk by, by deacon or father, and then have some um, short refreshments after that, a great little program that you can do. You know, other items, you know, don't forget to publicize all your events. You know, if you're doing coats for kids here, in a, you know, next week or so, or uh, food for families, you know, collecting canned goods or, or, or helping out a food pantry, make sure you're publicizing all that great works. You know, I was at, a, back in October, I was at Elizabeth New Life uh, Center event for one of their banquets. And um, a lady was wondering why the Knights of Columbus was getting mentioned so much during uh, their talk. And, uh, you know, I, and this was a table of 10. And I, I looked over and she knew I was a Knights of Columbus member. And I said, well, all the, all the, you know, all the ultrasounds in the Cincinnati area for all the various women's centers, Pregnancy Center East, Pregnancy West, all the other pregnancy centers that we have around the Cincinnati area have all had a donation by the Knights of Columbus for their ultrasound. You know, some pregnancy centers might have had two or more because they've upgraded to the newest, latest, you know, 
the 4D technology, but, you know, he was a person at our table that didn't know that, you know, Knights of Columbus donate ultrasounds, you know, you know, and how, how involved we are in that program. That program's been around for a while, so I don't think we always toot our horn as well as we should, you know, for all the support that we do. So think about that when it comes to programming, you know, make sure the councils are, you know, reporting the programs, as Chris has said, you know, it's a very simple thing from the state website to do those uh, program reports. And then, you know, the, the, the program directors will grade them. You know, I've done all the membership uh, growth activities, you know, thank you for submitting all those. And uh, we'll keep working on um, getting them as well uh, in a timely fashion. And you'll see that all those uh, points reflect as uh, Chris talked about on Ken's uh, star report each first of the month. So they can always look there to see how many points they've gathered so far in the general program contest. Now let's uh, transition gears into uh, my growth side here. You know, uh, as uh, Jeff said, we're doing well. Um, you know, and I, we need to keep up the pace going into the end of November and into December in order to be at our 50% goal. And that, that's where we're trying to, to be at come DD weekend is be at 50% from a state council perspective. That's what I'm trying for. I know all the state officers are trying for that. You know, so our incentive is going to be for you DDs. Look at that star council report and, you know, any DD that can get all their district have at least one new member by end of December, you're going to get $50, you know, in, you know, a little, uh, I'll call it a post Christmas stocking stuffer, you know, hopefully we can get those checks to you by the DD meeting or maybe a week after the DD meeting in January. So if you got councils in a district that have no growth right now, you grow them by one new member for that council. You have all four or five councils all have positive growth, you know, by the end of December, you're going to get $50. So um, that's for all the DDs. I'll send an email out uh, tomorrow or Tuesday on that. So you can, and, and send it out to all the coordinators. So, uh, Everybody sees that if they uh, missed the meeting tonight. For the DD coordinators for each diocese, I even, I'm giving you skin in the game as well. For any, any of you that have diocese or any of you have districts that don't have a DD, an uh, unassigned one, you know, you will get the $50 if you can get, you know, that unassigned district to have positive membership growth for any of the you know, councils that haven't grown a member yet. So think about that, you know, a little incentive for you. I'm also, as Jeff said, I'm working on a December incentive for the council. So I'll, I hopefully will have that out by uh, December 1st so we can, uh, you know, have uh, the last push for, uh, for the end of the year to get us to that 50% mark. Um, you know, uh, keep, keep up the great work. My one question to you, and this kind of goes along with what Jeff said and what Chris said is, when is your next identification in your district? You know, think about that right now. If you do not know when that is, you should as a DD. No matter, you know, you should know what council is either focusing on a exemplification of charity, unity, fraternity, or you should know which one really needs to be focusing on it. You know, which one just had one, which one, you know, is going to have the next one. And council should be recruiting to that degree date, you know. So, you know, don't don't just sit on a calendar, but recruit to that degree, you know. Matter if that's a church drive, you know, this these, you know, this is kind of we're going into let's say the holiday uh season with uh, Thanksgiving this week, you know, and, you know, as we go through Advent and the Christmas season here during December, you know, this is a great time for councils to be 
personally asking somebody to join the Knights of Columbus. And that's that's really the only way we ever see somebody join is when, you know, somebody comes up to them and personally asks them to join. You know, we can do a lot of marketing, a lot of spin, but it's that personal connection that we need with our members again to join and come in. So, you know, please, you know, as you're definitely at your family gatherings, if you know one of your cousins or one of your uncles are not, you know, a Knights of Columbus member, sit down with them, talk about why you joined, and hopefully that'll be incentive for, for him to join the Knights of Columbus, you know? You and use that QR code. It's the simplest way to get a member in, you know, get them on through the e-membership, you know, 30 day, you know, the, the third, all your dues are paid for the first year, you know, and then, you know, Greg can transfer them, you know, to the correct council if need be, if they don't sign up correctly. He's uh, doing a great job with that, making sure, uh, you know, as our e-members come in, four or five a day, you know, he's reassigned them to the uh, whatever parish or whatever council is closest to that parish. So uh, with that, I'll, uh, I'll turn it over to, looks like uh, our uh, Greg Singler, our e-membership director is next on the list. So I'll turn it over to Greg. Thank you, Andy. Good evening, Brother Excuse Knights. Excuse All right. me for a second, oh, Greg. Right. Let me yeah. jump in for a minute. I just, I forgot to announce it at the beginning. If anyone has any questions, just go ahead and ask it in the uh, Q&A box down there, and then that's going to go to us, and we'll be able to try to answer the questions before we wrap this up. So uh, if you have any questions, just send it to that box, and we'll take care of it then. All right. Go ahead, Greg. Thank you. Uh, good evening, Brother Knights. Uh, good to see everybody and talk to everybody this evening. I just got a few things that I wanted to cover. Uh, the first thing... Uh, Throughout the state of Ohio, right now, currently, uh, we are at a 55% uh, council to e-member uh, e-membership to council conversion rate, which means we have brought in 50, uh, over 55% of the guys that you brought in through e-members. E-membership has been uh, moved over to your council. That leaves about 45% of those e-members that have been uh, that have been uh, uh, signed up through the e-membership program have not been converted over to your councils yet. Please make sure that you're getting them uh, converted over within the 90 day uh, within the 90 day uh, uh, mark. Um, otherwise, he might be and he might end up uh, going on to the 98034s roster. And at that point, we would have to uh, use the uh, digital form 100 after that. Um, and I have copies of those. So if you ever run into that situation, feel free to reach out to me. I can get you that. Uh, I can get you that digital form 100. Um, the one thing that I wanted to show everybody uh, this evening is there, there's two things that I wanted to make sure that everybody's aware of. First of all, I don't know if everybody is aware, but right here on the home page of our, uh, uh, hold on one second. Sorry, I didn't screen share the correct one. There we go. Uh, so the uh, uh, for the Knights of Columbus um, home uh, count state website. We also we have a link that says click here to join us. Um, so if you are on your phone and you don't have the app, that everybody should have the button on their phone from uh, January. But if you didn't, or uh, from June, if you didn't see me in, in in January, if you need help. But if you also go to the state website and go to click here to join us, that gives our state website a, a chance to have uh, some traffic to it and also potentially a member uh, going to it. Um, and seeing uh, a potential prospect going into it and seeing the, all the good works that we do. Um, and the, the biggest thing is with this is it does take a minute to load, but once you once it loads everything, you can populate everything and fill it all, all the information in here. One of the biggest uh, things that I've always heard complaints on and guys are still having trouble, all you have to do with the blessed but give me phone or desktop, click the blue link, click add. That will eliminate the zero dollar amount right here. If you do not do that, he will be charged the thirty dollars, and he will be asked to uh, do the credit card, um, put his credit card information in. So that is uh, one thing that I've seen over the last uh, four or five months. Here is I've gotten questions about that. 
so just make sure when uh, you're signing a member up that he's just clicking that blue Blessed McGivney link and clicking add. He's got two steps. Click the blue link, click uh, of, of the words, and then click the blue button that says add. That way uh, they will um, not be charged for the members for membership for their first year. And finally, uh, I hope that everybody is using their parish bulletin announcements. Um, I've come up with some uh, some interesting ones here over the uh, last several several months. I, I I really thoroughly enjoy writing them for you guys to put them into your parish bulletins. So where is it by chance? Well, I know a lot of you guys are are reading uh, the the beacon, and there, there's a lot of information here, and I get it. There is a lot of information, but if you are looking for something specific, where do I go? Well, you got to go kind of down to page five and underneath uh, the wonderful Mike Jordan, there's me. Uh, so if you put in the uh, November church bulletin blurb and you use this any month for December, for January, February, use those. Uh, I guarantee you, you will get um, questions about them and you'll get answers to those members and they will in turn potentially join the Knights of Columbus. And you can even see right here, we are encouraging the members to go to kfc.org or kfcohio.org and then clicking on the homepage on the join us. That is, like I said previously, the hopes of getting them to check out our state website and getting them more enticed to join uh, our order, not just seeing what Supreme has to offer, but seeing what the Knights of Columbus in the state of Ohio has to offer. And, you know, they can click around. They might be able to find their diocese and things that they're doing in their diocese. Um, so even get it even closer to home. Um, so I think that that is a very important tool. I will have it sent out again here at the uh, uh, probably here over the next 24 hours. I'll get it sent over to our uh, communications team on the state and we'll get that uh, November bullets and blurbs sent out one more time and hopefully you guys can sneak it into your uh, parish bulletins here with this last this last week of november uh but other than that be about jesus and that's all i've got thanks greg um i guess we're going to move on to state warden tony offenberg good evening brother knights and district deputies uh of course, uh, probably got the agenda. We'll talk about rulers. Uh, there is a little error. It, the date on the form says 2024. Obviously, I do not want your ruler by December 20th, 2024. I want it by 2023. So uh, if you would get, uh, get them to me, a shout out to a couple districts, 25 and 42. I don't know if you're both on here, but I've got your your orders, and uh, we will have them waiting for you. Um, the rest of you, my number's in there. If you don't like to fill the form out and you just want to send me an email or text, I don't care. I will get you what you need, and uh, you will pick them up there. Uh, shout out. Here's the license plate. As all of you have seen before, we can get them ordered any time, and that helps us uh, grow money for our flagship charity. And uh, I believe that's all. Uh, keep keep doing the great stuff you guys do. I, I was in your shoes, kind of still in your shoes. I'm visiting councils as we uh, as we talk and uh, go forward and. And I'm visiting some outside my district because I am state officer. So I'm um, seeing some of their great stuff. And, and, uh, but uh, keep up fighting and we'll get there, guys. Trust me, you will. Be by Jesus. Hello. Chris Sarkin. There we go. Okay. All right. <clears throat> well, good evening, brothers. Uh, thanks for joining us this evening. I'll make this uh, quick as possible, but informative as I can be. Uh, I wanted to do kind of a recap. Uh, speaking of our flagship charity, Measure Up program, 
Uh, these numbers are going to change a little bit. We'll probably add close to uh, $4,700 to this uh, due to uh, just a recent addition. Uh, but just a quick snapshot of, as we're clo closing this program, uh, you'll probably see a report uh, within the next uh, week or two here as a final for the year. Uh, so please let your councils know this program uh, has closed. And, uh, you know, thank you for all the assistance and making sure we get our councils to participate. Uh, just for reference, our participation rate is continuing to drop. Um, last year was 150 in total councils. Uh, this year, we're at 144. Um, so we're seeing a, a slight decline year over year. Uh, so brothers, really, I, I know we can make our information at the tour meetings. Uh, we can send out information in the mail or emails or whatever it may be. Uh, but brothers, as you're visiting your councils and working with your Grand Knights, you're really the ones that are going to help drive the participation in these programs. I, uh, it's very important uh, that we keep stressing the importance of uh, what we do for charity. And, uh, you know, feel free to share uh, this information once this is sent out. Um, overall, I just want to kind of give a, a quick note out there. Uh, we did have a number one council for this year it is a council 11550. St. Joseph of Three Rivers. Uh, so they are up to $11,000. So just a wonderful work they've done with participating with uh, local businesses to drive that number uh, way above and beyond uh, what most turn-ins are coming in at. So that's their key. Uh, they're working with local businesses and, and getting donations brought into their council through them, uh, enabling them to drive that number. Uh, matching funds. So just kind of a quick update. So matching funds, we're doing okay. Uh, total dollars, we're, we're you know we're we're up there decent compared to last year, but we're still short. Um, probably the biggest thing again, brothers, is council participation. So I'm gonna go down here to the bottom. These are our total funds that were short year over year per diocese. And the biggest driver, as you can see, you know, councils are actually more generous. If you, if you look at the ratio from council to total funds short, we're actually doing real well this year with the councils that are participating. So please congratulate those and thank those councils that have participated and been very generous this year. At the same time, please use the STAR Council Report to see where your councils are at on participation. Uh, as you can see, the overall participation rate is quite less year over year. I will be making a last minute effort this week to contact these councils and ask if they still plan to participate. And if they do, to please have their check mailed in within the next uh, five business days. I know that may be difficult for some, but hopefully we can get this in because we have to close out this program in order to initiate the checks at our January district deputy meeting to present to all the uh, diocesan representatives for our uh, Catholic education and uh, faith evangelization within our diocese. So uh, with that, uh, brothers, these reports will be out soon. If you have any questions, please email me. I'll be happy to send you the most recent numbers or council information. And again, thank you for all you do. Viva the ACES. Thanks, Chris. Uh, moving on, uh, State Treasurer Jim Maslack. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us here tonight. It's hard to believe that we're already starting to talk about super cash, but just so you're aware, I, I've been talking super cash since oh, last year, probably, uh, as Mike laughs about it. Uh, we've been hard at work the last couple of months putting together a program that we hope will be entertaining, ridiculous, and to some degree funny. So hopefully you'll be able to enjoy it. And uh, I'll give you a little teaser here before I leave off um, as I've been crunching the uh, videos 
today, yesterday, and actually went back out to Maslin yesterday evening to do some outside shots. So um, hopefully it'll be a good thing for you. A couple of things I need you to make sure that you take care of. First and foremost is that the roadshow weekends are the first and second weekend in February. So for Steubenville, Youngstown, and Cleveland, that will be the second, third, and fourth. In Cincinnati, well, excuse me, Toledo, Cincinnati, and Columbus will be the ninth, 10th, and 11th. And I'll be working with the state officers to have the locations of those put down here shortly. So there'll be some information coming out by the DD meeting for that for you. Um, everything else, the booklets, the tickets, everything else has been sent to the printer and he's been busy uh, putting those together. So we'll be able to have those hopefully by mid-January so we can get them all set up and ready to go for you. So keep, even though football frenzy or Krazar has just ended to some degree, it's time to start thinking super cash and we will reach that $1 million this year. From a state council point of view, we are doing everything possible to look for relationships and partnering that we can do at a much larger scale than what you guys do at the local level so that we can help continue to help support the charities that you are doing there in your council. So keep up the good work, guys. As I promised, here will be the teaser. Let's see if I can get this thing to do what I want it to do. Ha, ha, ha. I got to make sure I hit sound, share sound. Yes, I want to share sound. Maybe it won't let me. Now we'll try it. We'll see what happens. Hopefully you heard that. If you did not, uh, I'll put a teaser out there on the website. All the information uh, will be updated on the state website under Supercash here probably in the next couple of weeks. So everything else is good. I appreciate all that you do as a DD myself. I mean, I, I know it's a challenging to get out to see my councils because they're an hour and a half away from me. But on the same token, find a way to communicate with them. And if what works for you works for them, it'll be great. And please fill out your DD reports. If there's anything else we can do to help you, feel free to give me a call. Viva Jesus. Thanks, Jim. Uh, moving on next is uh, State Secretary Mike Falerski. Hey, good evening, worthy district deputies, and thanks for being here tonight. Um, I get to talk about per capita, which I know a lot of a lot of councils don't like to think about. Um, however, uh, the uh, the invoices or bills were sent out to all the councils. If you have a council that did not receive a bill, uh, just let me know because we did run into I ran into uh, several issues with the Cincinnati uh, post office and uh, even some of the uh, refund checks. Uh, or rebate checks have not gotten to where they need to go. I had, uh, I had one check. It was gone for just over five weeks, and it came back to me, and it said undeliverable. Well, in the time that I had produced it and then and, and shipped it, uh, the financial secretary had changed. But it took that long for the post office to let me know uh, that that had happened. So um, feel free to email at me anytime and just say, and especially you know you can text me. And just say, hey, Mike, council, you know, 9977 is uh, hasn't received a bill or you haven't cashed their check yet. Uh, could you check on it? All, everything that I process, with the exception of the three I have right here, which came in in the last week, and I'm going to get those done tonight. All that information goes into a spreadsheet that I share with Ken, obviously with Ken Gert, so he could produce the star council report. So the star council report is the most accurate short of. Uh, you know, what what I have on a particular day, but it's basically the most accurate report as to who has paid their per capita. There's also been some questions on the per capita. Um, and, and it's kind of interesting because I've had a, a council even say, hey, I might have 91 <laughs> members on the books, uh, but, you know, I only get 12 guys that show up at a meeting. So I really only should pay for 12 guys. So there are some challenges there with some councils that uh, sounds like maybe they need uh, they need some rejuvenation. But uh, the uh, 
as I said, if there are any questions uh, or it, uh, counsel, and, and it's happened, I had a couple of counsels reach out to me and I know I sent them out, but they never received them. So I said, hey, no problem. I can email the, the bills or uh, remail them. So uh, just let me know. And that's all that I have. Thank you for all that you do. I know you guys are on the front lines. Uh, communications is the most important thing in the world. Uh, communications back and forth with your councils, uh, as you as, as DDs with your uh, state officer, and that really uh, keeps everything working. And uh, it's so 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 important. So, thank you again for all that you do. Viva Jesus! Thanks, Mike. Next up is our immediate past state deputy, Mark Saracusa. Well, welcome everybody. I'm on. First of all, I say you look good, Chris. I'm glad to see you're looking good. Um, I'm feeling better. Well, you're looking good, and, and welcome to all the brother nights. Um, I've already sent out the letters. I've sent out to the councils, assemblies, and chapters letters for the SOS. As you guys know, the 15th is when we were telling we try to get their first turn in. And, you know, now that they're, I've gotten 28 councils already submitted them. They're starting to come in regular every day go to the mailbox, I get three, four, five, or six. So they're starting to come in now. We're doing pretty good. And I expect uh, um, we're going to do real good this year. Um, everything seems to be going pretty smooth, especially with the mail. Everything, knock on wood, went out okay. You never know sometimes. And I'm only getting a couple back. Uh, you know, when we send stuff out sometimes, we don't get, and this is key with, with the, when we ask the councils and, and DDs, you can help us on this. When we talk about the 185 and the 365, it's really important because like right now, I don't know why that's jumping back and forth, but anyhow, um, it, it's important to get the correct information because then when we send out stuff like I did, you know, I've gotten back, I think th three or four now, say that's the wrong address so it's really key that you check with your councils and make sure they get those things sent in and sent in what the correct address besides that things are looking pretty good it's a little too early yet with the sos one thing i want you to do is um <coughs> excuse me is talk to your councils and when you see them say ask them if they have turned them in their SOS and if they haven't to get it in and if they have turned it in thank them for me besides that keep up the good work you DDs um, you guys are like I've said before you're the conduit you guys without us without you I mean there's nothing we can get done you guys are the conduit between us and the council so keep up the good work thank you and viva Jesus <laughs> Thank you, Mark. Before we go to Jeff, I'm going to answer, gonna try to get some answers to a couple of questions that have been put up here. And uh, I think, uh, Andy, I'm going to ask you this one. I don't know if you've, uh, there, there's been some confusion with upon entering programs using the drop down options. I understand council choice can only be used once but a council had a program not approved because they already used the drop down option. Could you explain a little bit of the problem there that Chris, uh, because Chris. there's another question down here further. It says, what's the best way to break down the difference between the programs needed for a Colombian award versus the programs needed for state programming for the councils? Yeah. I can, so I can there's try a couple it. different questions there. Yep. Yeah. I saw that question. So the, the Colombian award is all based around four programs that you have to enter for the fraternal year for each of, you know, for faith, family, community, and life. So our, our state general program that Mike Jordan is heading up has more programs you have to enter than those four. So that I think that's where the, the disconnect comes, uh, where the DDs between you know, uh, on the state program, there's more because you got council choice programs that could be used, you know, but Supreme only cares about four programs. And if 
And the, the other the other wrinkle I would say was between the general program and the and the uh, Supreme Columbian Award is if a if a person is doing a Supreme feature program, let's say RSVP or Food for Families, um, Ultrasound, you know, some of those featured programs from Supreme. Um, Mike Jordan's program contest is only counting those as a one program credit for whatever program that's under. Um, unlike when I was program director, that way I counted for two programs. That That's really the only difference between, you know, when I was program director versus what uh, uh, Mike Jordan is doing under his general program contest. But basically, it, come, it comes down to, and really, it doesn't matter what council is used for the Columbian Award. They just need four programs. So by by the state having you do more programs, that just gives you more opportunity. Okay, I'm going to, you know, from a DD perspective, you just tell that council, pick the best four programs that you did and put that on the Columbian Award application, you know, and send that in. So that's what it comes down to. Now for the uh, the state, for the actual program entering in stuff, um, I would direct any questions you have to Tom Beamer for stuff like that. My guess is he might have a little bad logic in the code because I thought if they rejected one of those council choices, they could re-put in another council choice that could get approved by whatever director that is. So I would send that question to Tom Beamer, our, our state webmaster, and make sure he uh, looks that over from a from that council perspective, make sure uh, there's nothing funny going on on the back end of that. Um, I, I know, I don't know, a month or so ago, I noticed a weird error message that I was getting when I was approving programs and I sent that to Tom and he looked at it and uh, the council got awarded the points correctly, but it wasn't showing up as approved on the, the programming side. So he fixed that and got it all related. So I'd say any DDs that have issues from uh, the, the drop down perspective, I would uh, have, send an email to Tom Beamer, tell him what council number it is, when it was entered, and he'll be able to look up that information to uh, report on it and, um, you know, make sure everything's driving correctly with the uh, program points. You know, uh, we definitely don't want anybody to get missed, you know, but catching it now is great because we can fix it, you know, well before, you know, the, the deadline coming up for the uh, state convention, you know, the April 1st and April 15th deadline dates, so. Andy, if I could just jump in there a second. Yep. Okay. Uh, Mike and I had some discussion on these uh, these these um, council choice activities and that. And, and Mike's going to clarify that in the next newsletter. Uh, he, he's going to uh, send out some information on that. Um, as, as far as the uh, Colombian versus the state, the state is modeled after the, the Supreme Faith in Action program. So you do the, the four activities in, in the four program areas just the same way as you do Supreme. So basically they're the same. There's really no difference except for that additional non-faith in action activity uh, that the council's add. And it can be a faith in action. It just it gives you the chance to do a non-faith. Um, I also see a question from Mike Incravati about the, uh, does the state charge per capita for life members? No, they do not. That, the, the life members are deducted out of the, uh, the total membership of the council when we do those calculations. So they are not charged for that. We are also deduct um, for the... Um, well, inactive insurance. Yes. Uh, also, the um, disabled, if, if you have a, a member with a disability is getting a, an exemption, we deduct that out of there as well. 
So I hope I hope that answers. I think that's the all the questions. Got me. Okay. That's Good. all. The, that's all the questions we have. So the floor is yours now. Okay. <laughs> to, to wrap things up. Okay. Uh, again, thank you guys not only for giving up your time during the course of this fraternal year, but uh, for for being with us tonight. Uh, we we really appreciate all that you're doing. Um, just want to remind you the. Uh, the January district deputy meeting is coming up very soon. Um, what is that? January fifth to the seventh, something somewhere around there. The, the first, yes. the first uh, full weekend in January, uh, will be at the uh, Marriott. I'm trying to think what what the city. Columbus is there, Marriott. That's it. And uh, Blazer Parkway. We were there before. Um, Actually, it would have been last January, huh? Mm -hmm. we there. Yeah, we'll be back at that one again. We just had to use the OSU one for the summer. Anyways, that information's coming out. Um, please get your registrations in tomorrow. Okay, good. Uh, please get your registrations in very soon. We have we have to have the numbers into the hotel by uh, somewhere like a December fourteenth, somewhere in there. Um, we have we have uh, Chris and I have been working pretty hard on getting the agenda put together uh, in conjunction with what Supreme wants us to cover with with you district deputies. So we have a lot of lot of information coming this weekend at the, at the DD weekend. Uh, we have asked for and uh, received permission to have the extra day. So we'll have uh, Friday night and Saturday night. We'll be staying there. Uh, we have ac activities. We have uh, a couple of workshops Friday night for you. Uh, we'll have a meeting. We'll have the breakout sessions like we did the, in the summertime uh, with uh, smaller groups uh, to discuss various things. Uh, again, we'll be having the banquet Saturday night and mass Saturday evening. And, uh, Wrap things up Sunday morning. Should get you out of there before noon on Sunday. Uh, so please uh, sign up for that. If there's an issue where you can't uh, can't make it, or there, there's other ish, financial issues, whatever, let me know. We'll, we'll see what we can do to to help you uh, get to that because I think it's pretty important for you as a district deputy not only to be with the group of district deputies and, and uh, interact with them and, and learn what's going on with their districts, talk about what's going on with your district, just real important for us to all be together that weekend. It really is a helpful weekend. Um, so if there's an issue, give me a call, text, let, let me know, talk to me. Okay, I, I wanna know about it. Um, the youth protection at Supreme is working now. I know there's been an issue with that the whole first couple of months uh, this fraternal year, uh, but hopefully that is, is working. Uh, check with your councils, see who needs to be certified and help them. If you need help, let us know. We'll help you get on. Um, that is part of uh, store council requirements. Part of our program requirements is uh, the officers are, are compliant in the youth protection. Um, know what your councils need to uh, do in addition to what they've already been doing to achieve Star Council. We are really promoting Star Council. We're encouraging councils to, to try and get a Star Council award, and we're going to do all we can to help them get that award. Uh, outside and going out and recruiting members for them, and we're we're going to do that as well. But uh, be aware of what they need and where they're lacking as far as being able to get a star council. Work with them, help them. If you need help with that, let someone know on the team. We'll we'll give you that help as well. Uh, I guess I want to close by wishing you all a, a very uh, happy and blessed Thanksgiving. Um, enjoy your time with your families and uh, go Buckeyes. Beat the snot out of Michigan. <laughs>
that's all I have, Chris. It's all yours. All right. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, before we have a prayer here, gentlemen, I just want to uh, tell you one little story. Um, the, I watched the webinar the other night from Supreme, and it was about, uh, you know, where's your councils, uh, where they stand, what they need to do to get going uh, for this year, finish this year strong and go into next year. And I thought it was very telling. Uh, well, I believe the gentleman's name is Tom McCaffrey or whatever. He's the one that's hosting it. He is currently, well, he's a past state deputy of uh, California, I believe. And, but now, you know, also he's in, the Navy. in Connecticut. So he is and in the Navy, yes. Well, he's now a grand knight of a council. And he was talking about how he was struggling to get this council going. It needed to be rejuvenated. And he said he's just about pulling his hair out trying to do it so here's the guy that's at supreme and he he prefaces his remarks by saying he says even those in the ivory tower we have trouble with it so guys you're not alone there's a lot of problems out there with uh we've got councils that are hurting we've got uh where resources are stretched thin but we're all trying to do this together so just want everyone to remember you're not in this alone so i thought that was a pretty telling remark from someone admitted that you know you look to supreme and you think they've got all the answers but you know they struggle just as much as what we do so i'd really like everybody to hang in there and as jeff said i want everybody to have a thank happy thanksgiving and uh, hope to see you all in january so we're going to close with the prayer for the canonization of blessed uh, michael mcgidney name father and son holy spirit God, our Father, protector of the poor, and defender of the widow and the orphan, you called your priest, Blessed Michael McGivney, to be an apostle of Christian family life and to lead the young to the generous service of their neighbor. Mm -hmm. Through the example of his life and virtue, may we follow your son, Jesus Christ, more closely, fulfilling his commandment of charity and building up his body, which is the church. Let the inspiration of your servant prompt us to greater confidence in your love so that we may continue his work of caring for the needy and the outcasts. We humbly ask that you glorify blessed Michael McGivney on earth according to the design of your holy will. Through this intercession, grant the favor I now present. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the Father and the Son, Holy Spirit, Amen. Thank you, gentlemen, for attending tonight. Uh, I don't know how many of us logged on here, but uh, really appreciate ones that did. Uh, Jim has informed me that he will have a recording of this meeting up on the DD webpage on the state website by tomorrow. So, if you something that you want to see a, a review again, you can see it there. And we'll pass the word on to anyone who missed the meeting that they'll be able to watch it and uh, pick up the important pointers that we all put out there. So once again, I'd like to say thank you and good night and go Bucks. Thank hey, you. Jim. Jim. Hello. Yes. Jim, you hear me? Yes. Uh, when are the tickets going to go out, the charity tickets to me for my diocese? I've just got a question about the you will not get them till the middle of January. Okay. All right. We'll talk here in December. Yep. I'm thinking about having them sent someplace else beside the house since there'll be so I many. I don't that I need to know sooner than later. Okay. Well, I I don't know what, what everybody else usually does, but when you're not home during the day, what's what's the procedure? I'm closer to the post office here and where I work than I am from my post office at home. So we might want a different address. Okay, we can work. They on usually it. ship them UPS, right? Yeah, I mean that's yeah. yeah so UPS. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay, I didn't know they came you'll, UPS. You'll yep. get one per box <laughs> and one for the uh, the posters. Posters, right? I got you. I got you. I thought they came uh, post or post office, so yeah, I didn't have a problem. No. If yeah. you get the U uh, UPS app, you can track that. Okay, that's fine. We'll see you guys. All right. Take care. Take care. Thanks a lot, everyone. Hi, guys.